the 2012 Tornado Safety Video presented by Neoweather.com. I'm forecaster Mark Spencer from Neoweather.com. Welcome to the Tornado Safety Video. Let's start here with how do tornadoes form. Tornadoes form in the thunderstorms that contain strong updrafts. Strong columns of air rising rapidly into the storm. These updrafts can interact with a wind field aloft and begin to create wind shear, which is a change in wind speed or direction with height. As the updraft gets stronger, this horizontal spinning can become vertical. Once this occurs, this vertical spinning, up and down spinning, could support a tornado if this column of air comes close to the ground. The same effect can cause a storm to spin as well, which can support tornado development. This is called a mesocyclone, and this is generally what we're looking at here on our screen with the uh, warm rising air through the center of the storm. So how do we measure tornadoes? We measure tornado strength using the enhanced Fujita scale. This replaced the original Fujita scale in 2007 to account for building methods used on structures, among other things, and also takes into account the damage done along the tornado's path and not just its estimated wind speed. The ESDL contains six intensity ratings, rating from EF0 to EF5. EF0's range, uh, wind speeds range from 65 to 85 miles per hour, and EF1 ranges from 86 to 110 miles per hour. EF2, 111 to 135 miles per hour. EF3, 136 to 165 miles per hour. EF4, 166 to 200 miles per hour. And EF5, over 200 miles per hour. We can also break down tornado intensity into three basic classes here. Weak tornadoes, which would be those of EF0 to EF1 in strength, account for almost 90% of all tornadoes and the least amount of deaths. They are short-lived with winds generally under 110 miles per hour. Strong tornadoes, those of EF2 to EF3 in strength, account for about 10% of all tornadoes and about a third of all tornado deaths. They can last longer than 20 minutes with winds of up to 165 miles per hour. Lastly, violent tornadoes, those of EF4 to EF5 in strength, account for only about 1% of all tornadoes but have the highest amount of deaths around 70%. These tornadoes can stay on the ground for over an hour and cover several miles. Winds are greater than 166 miles per hour and can cause significant widespread damage. So let's take a look here at some safety tips. The first thing we want to uh, take a look at is the difference between a tornado watch and tornado warning. A tornado watch means that conditions are right for the development of thunderstorms capable of producing tornadoes. Many times when a tornado watch is issued, no tornadoes develop. These are usually issued several hours in advance of severe weather developing or moving into the watch area. A tornado warning means that a tornado has been spotted either by a trained spotter, the public, law enforcement, or was detected on radar that a tornado could form at any time. On average, the lead time for a tornado warning is about 15 minutes. Keep in mind that tornadoes can form rapidly and a warning might not get issued until a tornado has developed. When a warning is issued, seek shelter immediately as you may only have moments to act. To get a tornado warning means a tornado is either imminent or occurring. Uh, a different term here is tornado emergency. This is being used a little bit more commonly these days, specifically within the past year. It's a statement issued in conjunction with a tornado warning regarding a storm that is producing a strong tornado in a high population area. It is special emphasis wording used to indicate that the storm is very dangerous and has caused or is causing serious damage, which is expected to continue and advises people to act immediately to seek shelter from the storm. Again, tornado emergency is issued along with a tornado warning that's right in the same product. It means that a significant tornado is ongoing near a high population area. Also want to touch base here on tornado sirens. In Ohio, many communities use outdoor tornado sirens to warn residents when a tornado warning is issued, but this is not always the case. Some towns also sound their sirens for severe thunderstorm warnings. You should become familiar with your community's policy on when they sound their sirens and for what purpose. In most cases, these towns sound their tornado sirens for tornado warning. 
Some will also sound an all clear, although that is something not very common these days, but a few towns still do. Typically, different siren tones are used, and each type of tone has a different meaning. Remember, not all towns have tornado sirens, and there is no requirement for towns to have them. After all, they are very expensive to purchase and maintain. Recently, legislation was introduced into the state of Ohio legislature to mandate that all towns in Ohio with sirens sound their sirens for tornado warnings. And that is policy basically making this more uniform across the state. There's been confusion with people living near two different towns that have sirens, where one town is sounding for a severe thunderstorm warning and tornado warning, and another town is only sounding for tornado warnings, and it's hard to tell which town that siren is coming from. So they're trying to make this more uniform so it's much easier to remember as people travel across the state and hear these sirens. Everybody knows what they mean. So again, become familiar with your town's tornado sirens. Okay, let's talk a little bit about tornado shelter. Where do you seek shelter if a tornado warning is issued? Well, the best place to seek shelter is a basement or a storm shelter if you have one of those. If you're in a basement, seek shelter under something sturdy, such as a staircase or a workbench. The idea here is to try to get under something sturdy that will protect you in the event something falls. If you do not have a basement, you want to seek shelter in a room towards the middle of your home, preferably in a closet or a bathroom. The idea is to put as many walls between you and the outside of your home. Stay away from windows and doors. Be sure to bring a blanket or something else to cover you. If you're in a mobile home, get out! Mobile homes are not safe, even if they are mounted to a foundation. They are not made to withstand strong winds, let alone a tornado. If you're in a vehicle or outdoors, the best thing to do is to try to get into a sturdy building quickly. Being in your vehicle is never safe, and you should never try to outrun a tornado. If you are in a car, an adequate shelter is not available, and you can determine which direction the tornado is moving, you can try to drive in cardinal directions, north, east, south, or west, away from the way the tornado was moving. So if it's moving east, you would like to drive south. Driving in this manner can get you away from the tornado, but you may not see flying debris, and you could possibly enter the hail corner of a storm or a heavy rain uh, shower, something like that, where your visibility now is reduced, or you could get hit by debris. It's very dangerous to do this. You should only do this if you have no other options available. You can also lie down in the ditch and cover your head to try and protect yourself. And again, we only suggest this if this is your only other option. This is not a tornado shelter. Overpasses are not tornado shelters. This is extremely dangerous and the overpass offers little to no protection. While many of us have seen the video where many people took shelter under an overpass as a tornado went over it, we must keep in mind that all overpasses are different. Hiding next to the beams at the top of the overpass is also not safe as it is possible the overpass could collapse if it's hit by the tornado. Plus the overpass offers no protection from flying debris and winds and they'll still be very strong as they go through that overpass. No matter what anyone says though, taking shelter under an overpass is extremely dangerous and you should not do it. All right, I want to talk a little bit about Ohio tornado history. Ohio is not a state known too much for having a lot of tornadoes. On average, we see about 16 tornadoes per year with peak tornado season from April through July. Tornadoes, however, have occurred in every month of the year in Ohio. Some of the more historic events include the Xenia tornado in April of 1974 as part of the super outbreak and May 31st, 1985, the F5 tornado that devastated the town of Newton Falls along with that many other smaller tornadoes formed that day near the Ohio and Pennsylvania border and caused severe damage in the western Pennsylvania. Some of the other more notable events include July 12, 1992. We had the most tornadoes in one day. 28 tornadoes were recorded in Ohio. This was the most tornadoes ever recorded across the state. Many tornadoes formed across northern Ohio, and this caused significant damage across a large area. Fortunately, though, these tornadoes were on the weaker side, with no violent tornadoes recorded, and there were no fatalities, and only 36 injuries. A little bit more recently, the November 2002 Van Wert tornado was rated an F4 that went through the city of Van Wert in northwest Ohio and caused significant damage to the town. It's one of the more stronger tornadoes we've had since 1985. This tornado also showed us that tornadoes can occur at any time of the year, and more recently we've also noticed a trend in early to mid-November where a brief warm pattern can spark severe weather across the region. Just more recently here, the September 2010 Worcester tornado was rated a strong EF3 
and that caused significant damage to the town of Worcester and the OARDC campus of the Ohio State University Extension Office. Several buildings were damaged or destroyed, with a few of them completely removed from their foundations. And even more recently, the March 2, 2012 tornadoes in southwestern Ohio, that was part of a much larger system that moved to the lower Ohio Valley. We had mainly EF0 to EF3 tornadoes that moved through our state, with the town of Moscow, Ohio receiving substantial damage, and that was rated an EF3. And again, this is further proof that tornadoes can indeed form at any time of the year if the right conditions are present. There were several other tornadoes reported across southern Ohio as well that ranged anywhere from EF0 to EF2 in strength. NeoWeather keeps you ahead of the storm. NeoWeather strives to bring you the most accurate information when severe weather affects our area. Using our NeoWeather 3D Max Doppler radar, we were able to see inside the storm in 3D and tell you what this storm is doing. Many of the pictures on this uh, slide here show the three-dimensional pictures we can derive from the radar imagery. Using this state-of-the-art software allows us to quickly inform our viewers of impending severe weather and allow you to take precautions immediately. We also strive to provide as much lead time as we possibly can and we re relay all National Weather Service watches and warnings. We also have our live stream to do this as well. We're streaming live our radar and we're able to tell you about all these warnings and show you exactly where they're at here on our radar. They pop right up immediately as, as soon as they're issued. Uh, we'll come live to you using the live stream uh, as soon as severe weather begins to threaten to bring you the most up-to-date radar imagery and information as well as uh, safety tips keeping you ahead of the storm. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and receive vital information immediately. Having these social media outlets allow us to send information out immediately. It gets to everybody that follows us on both of them. The second we hit send, it goes right to you. So if you're on your phone or anything like that, you'll get it right away through Facebook and Twitter. And of course, we also try to provide and strive to provide you the most accurate and timely information when severe weather does hit our area. So you can count on us to keep you informed when severe weather strikes. Check us out on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and check our YouTube page for the latest forecast. NeoWeather.com, Ohio's home for weather.